Hey everyone, my name is Rachel and today we are going to be doing another kind of like reactionary response video to a video that recently got recommended to me on my YouTube homepage titled What It Means to Submit to Your Husbands. I'm really into talking about the aspects of religion that affect people on a kind of everyday basis. I, as an atheist, kind of feel like I don't exactly make up my own rules for a living, but I take responsibility for my own life and how I live my life and the rules that I do and don't follow. So I do find it a little bit bizarre that people do base huge, huge chunks of their life on a very ancient text, which may or may not even be true in places. So before we start talking specifically about this video, I want to talk a little bit about how I personally view relationships. Not saying this is the right way, not saying this is the only way to view them, just this is my kind of opinion and my thoughts. All relationships are different, and what works for one couple won't always work for another couple. I think that's completely fair to say, that's kind of common sense, people know this, right? I'm lucky that I've seen some pretty incredible relationships in my life. My parents have been married for over 30 years, my brother and sister are both in very, very happy marriages with other people, I should add. I myself am in a very, very happy long-term relationship, me and Dan have plans to get married, and all of these relationships work, but for different reasons. However, one thing that I think is key to pretty much all relationships is to realise that it's a partnership, it's about equality. Now, I don't mean that each person in the relationship should be doing exactly the same thing, I recognise that different people take on different roles and you do what works for you, right? But these roles shouldn't be defined by gender, and they shouldn't be assigned by one person. Me and Dan, in particular, we split things according to our strengths and our preferences. I do the washing, Dan does the ironing. Dan takes out the bins, I clean the bathroom. I clean the kitchen, Dan cleans the living room. It's different, but it's equal. We're a team and we do things together, neither one of us is the leader in the relationship because that just seems unnecessary to us. I don't think relationships need someone to be in charge and someone to follow for them to work. I mean, maybe specific tasks need a leader, that's fair enough. For example, I'm useless with sorting out things like money and bills and official documents, so generally Dan takes a lead on that stuff and just gives me a list of things to do. Same as when we get a dog, Dan's never had a dog before whereas I have, so I'm kind of taking charge of that, I guess you could say, I'm the one who's looking at animal shelters and coming up with a budget and you know making lists of things that we're gonna need. I'll be looking after him throughout the day, Dan will take a bigger role in the evenings just because that's when we're home and that's probably how it's gonna be easiest for us. So once again, different but equal. I think everything I said there is pretty much common sense and that's fair enough, I think it's so obvious. But apparently not everyone thinks that way. So today this video was suggested on my YouTube homepage and I started watching it and just didn't really like it, so I thought it would be an interesting one for us to talk about. Okay, ladies, today we're gonna talk about the S word. What does it mean to be submitted to your husband? Now, if you've seen some of my other videos, you may know that one of my least favorite Bible passages of all time is the wives submit to your husband's one. I really, really hate it. And what's worse is when Christian women in particular try and interpret it in a certain way or kind of twist it to make it sound like it's a great thing, it's not awful, it's so empowering. I just, I really dislike that and I'm like, well, no it's not. Even when you try and spin it a certain way, even when you try and make it sound great, like this woman in the video does, I think it still sounds like a terrible way to live. But that's just my opinion. But let's take a look at what specifically she has to say. Okay. The word submission is kind of like a bad word. It's a word that a lot of women bristle at because in the word it's kind of loaded with meaning and the meaning's more about being controlled. And I don't know a lot of women that want to feel like they're controlled by their husband. Excellent point. I don't want to be controlled. Dan doesn't want to be controlled. Please continue. But I think it's important for us to talk about this in a video today to make sure we understand what God means by submission and let the Bible speak to the definition and the purpose behind it. So let's do that. I, I guess it's good to know that God can just make up definitions of words whenever he wants and we're just supposed to know what they mean, right? Oh, thought, do you think we misinterpret it when he said anyone who curses their father or mother should be put to death? Maybe put to death really just means gets a stern talking to. Maybe we've just been taking this the wrong way all this time. God. Anyway, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, carry on, please. Okay, ladies, here's the definition for submission. Choosing to yield to another's will. Hmm. That is literally what I thought the definition was. And that still sounds like being controlled to me. Just because it's voluntary doesn't mean it's not control. You're still being controlled, but 
voluntarily controlled. You're still giving up some of your freedom to choose how you act and what you do. You're still giving up some of your freedom of choice. You're still giving up some of your independence. You're not an equal with a person if you're submitting to them. You're not an equal to a person if you believe that they're your leader in a particular setting. I just, I don't think submission has any place in a healthy relationship. Compromise certainly does, but submission does not. Now, you may already be reacting in a negative way to that definition, but, but hold on, be patient. Actually, I am. How did she know? God, it's almost as though what she's saying is completely unreasonable, isn't it? So in submission is this choosing to yield to another's will. So as that pertains to marriage, wives, you are choosing to yield to your husband. You're choosing to say, I'm going to allow you to lead because from what the Bible has to say, husbands are the leaders in their home. We'll talk about that more in a few minutes. But it's a choice, ladies, that you make to say, I understand that my role's different and I need to choose to yield to allow my husband to lead. Now, inherent in a choice means you're not just under the thumb of someone. You're not just being controlled by someone. It kind of does though, doesn't it? Because you don't have another choice and that's the issue. I mean, would it also be just as acceptable for me to say, now nah, mate, I want as much influence over my life as my partner does? Or, actually, I think I should be the leader in this family. Dan, submit to me, bitch. Because unless those are equally as acceptable options, it's not really a choice, is it? I mean, if you did choose one of those things as a Christian, you'd be called a bad Christian, or say you're going against the Bible, or maybe even told you're going to hell, probably. So that doesn't seem like much of a choice to me. It's like saying, it's okay, some Jews actually chose to like line up and get on the trains and go to concentration camps instead of being shot in the street. So what happened to them once they were there? It wasn't oppressive or unfair because they submitted to the Nazis. It was what they wanted. I know that's a pretty extreme example, but still. You're an active participant in how submission should look and how God intended it to work. So it's not that God's saying to us ladies that we have no value, you have no purpose or meaning, you just do what you're told. Freedom doesn't really have all that much to do with like purpose and value in this case anyway. Slaves had value to the slave owners. Slaves had a purpose in their life for the slave owners, but they also didn't have freedom. Sure, some of them may have willfully submitted to their slave owners, but only because the alternative was beatings or mistreatment or potentially death. Again, not much of a choice. Just because it's voluntary submission doesn't mean you're not being controlled. I mean, I don't know, I kind of see this as a similar but thankfully less extreme kind of thing. And while I'm using these horrific examples, let's take a look at what they have in common. The Holocaust, slavery, the victims weren't seen as human. They weren't treated as people, as individuals. And that's the problem with how the Bible often talks about women. Their possessions, their objects, their helpers, but they're never individual people on their own. And I think that's a real, real issue. If this was any other book, if this was any other work of fiction or something, people would be crying out that it was sexist, that it was horrific, that the women weren't even characters at all. They were, they were sidekicks, they were helpers. Because you have a lot to offer, because you come into marriage as a helpmate to your spouse, only one person can lead. Really? Are you sure about that? I mean, who says? Are you sure this is the best, most productive, happiest way for every single couple in a relationship to live? I mean, where's your proof? And if that's the case, why must it be the man? Why must it be the husband who's the leader? What's your proof that that's the best, most productive thing? And if it is only the man, then what about same-sex couples? Do both men fight for the leadership role? And is that why they don't work? And if it's both women, do they just like flap around helplessly crying out for a man to come along and tell them what to do? Maybe that's why same-sex couples never work out. No, that's silly. There are plenty of perfectly happy same-sex couples. I'm just trying to illustrate the point that like, assigning leadership to a certain gender is stupid. It's like ages back now when I made a similar video on like, well, a different video on a similar topic, someone commented and it was something along the lines of, oh, of course men and women have like assigned roles. Can you imagine what looks better? Um, a small woman lovingly holding a baby or a big burly man in like a lumberjack shirt with a big beard holding a baby, which one looks more natural? And I'm like, well, that's silly. Both of them. I mean, 
Okay, Je Jelly Bean's gonna help me out for this. This is Jelly Bean. He's new to the family and he's adorable. I may or may not have bought matching dogs for me and my nephew. He's three. I think that says a lot about how secure I am with my maturity. <laughs> Anyway, gender means nothing, because which of these sounds better? A woman who's like, there, there, child. Good child. Or a man who's like, hey, little buddy. How you doing? Yeah, you good? Yeah. Which of those is the more natural parent? Which of those is the more natural caregiver for small children and babies? In that example, it's the man, because again, Gender has nothing to do with how good a parent you are, or how good you're going to be in certain roles. It has everything to do with your personality. Like, I have no doubt out of me and Dan, he is going to be the far better parent because he is way better with kids. I'm just not that maternal. Anyway, let's carry on, let's go back to the video. Good job, Jellybean. Okay, so now that we have the definition out of the way, here's the next thing I want to say. Really, ladies, for us to dig deep and to understand truly what submission is about and understanding what God's heart is behind that, you have to first be submitted to God and to his word. Yeah, but again, even with this whole submit to God thing, it's not really offering a choice, is it? Because if you do believe in the Christian God, then your choice is basically worship him or spend an eternity being punished in hell. I mean, you might say, oh, I'm choosing to submit to God, it's what I want, but it's not really the choice when the alternative is so horrific, is it? Okay, so it's like a free, fair choice is this. Do I want to eat this bar or this bar? Because nothing bad happens if I choose one or the other. It's all good. That's a free, fair choice. Now, if I say, do I want to eat this bar or starve to death? That's not really a free, fair choice, is it? Because if I don't pick this one, which is apparently great and fun and it, it's tasty, it's really, really good, but if I don't pick it, I die. Because the average person doesn't want to die. When we go to the Bible, it's very clear how God designed the family to work. Oh, okay, okay, this, this all makes sense now because the Bible said it, it must be true. What about the fact society has changed a hell of a lot since the Bible was written, or about the fact that we've learnt a hell of a lot more about people and families and life, and just we have so much more knowledge now, and we're, we're entirely different people, we have entirely different ideologies, and hopes, and dreams, and goals, and an entirely different kind of like life to when the Bible was written. I mean, what about the fact that the Bible is pretty outdated? Where's your proof that what was apparently the best scenario in the Bible is the best scenario for every single couple in the world today? And where's your proof that it's going to be the best scenario for every single couple in the world in the future? I'm not buying it because there is none. God's design for the home, for marriage, is that the husbands are the leaders. And so your job, first and foremost then, at the end of the day, really has to come down to, are you submitted first to God's will? Are you submitted first to God's word? And if you don't first have that heart that says, I want to submit to God in his way, then it's going to be very difficult for you to want to submit to your husband. Okay, okay, this would make sense. So what you're saying is, if you like your independence and you're a strong, confident person who likes to, you know, infer their own meaning and purpose from life, uh, you're probably not going to just want to blindly follow another person. How interesting. I need to listen to what it has to say, even on the topic of submission, that can be kind of hard to swallow sometimes. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For husbands are the head of the wife, as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so wives you should submit to your husbands in everything. So again, ladies, really the bigger question for us is not even just are we willing to submit to our husbands and to yield to them to be the leader, but it's really about am I truly submitted to God and to his word and to his way? And clearly, God chose husbands to be the leaders in the home. But again... Why? Without a why, without reason, I just can't accept it, I'm sorry. Until you prove to me why this is the best, what the benefits are for every person involved, and why that's better than any other option, I'm not gonna just be able to accept it. So instead of coming into things and saying, well, I want to wrestle control out of my husband's hand, or I want to stake my claim, that you first understand God knows what he's doing. Does he though? 
Like, I don't want to get into the details right now, but God seems to have screwed up a lot to me. Seems he didn't make us so perfect, seems there's a lot of crap in the world, seems there's a lot of stuff that God allowed to happen or that he condemned, which really don't make sense. Seems that there's a lot of sucky things that God's done. I don't think he's that perfect, and I, I'm not entirely convinced that if he exists, he knows what he's doing. And I don't think he exists. Now let me finish with this point, because the passage in Ephesians chapter 5 goes on to say some things to husbands as well. And here's what I want you to know. So ladies, God calls us to submit. He calls wives to submit and husbands to love. Well, that doesn't seem very fair, does it? What if I want to love and not submit? Hang on a minute. Why are loving and submitting mutually exclusive? Hmm. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. He did this to present her to himself as a glorious church, without spot or wrinkle or any other blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies, for a man who loves his wife actually shows love for himself. Okay, okay, I've got it. So, so the husband's job is to make the wife holy and without fault, because loving his wife is actually showing love for himself. I don't know about you, but it's not like husbands are being uh, let off the hook here. Mm, kind of kind of sounds like they are, actually. You know, for some of us, we might really bristle initially at the idea of submission because we don't really understand what God means by that. But certainly when you then put submission to a husband in the context of how a husband's supposed to love his wife, then you can start to see how God's design is it's a very balanced thing. No, it's not. It's so far from a balanced thing. I know like a lot of Christians bring up the like submit to each other bit, right? But she just said it all here. If submission for a wife is to yield to the husband in, and I quote, everything, and basically give up her independence and freedom in a lot of ways, while for a husband or the man, submission just means loving the wife and making sure she has like a good reputation and she like feels good about herself and she makes you look good and feel good. Nothing about that feels equal or balanced to me. I know you're saying that both people submit, but to each person, submitting is a very different thing. And the wife has to give up a hell of a lot more than the man does. There's nothing balanced about that. Ultimately, it's still about the man being in charge, the woman giving up things, the woman being reliant on the man, and both people doing it for no other reason than to make a god happy so they don't go to hell. None of it seems fair. See, husbands are called to love their wives as Christ loved the church. And if you know anything about that, what you know is that Christ was selfless and sacrificial that he put us before himself, that he thought of our needs before his own needs. And I don't know about you, but in relationship with my husband, when I'm feeling loved that way, when my husband is putting me ahead of even himself, when he's giving me more love and attention and putting my needs before his own, it's not a difficult thing then to allow him to lead our family because he's earned my trust and he's shown me by his love that his, his whole plan of how our marriage and our family life works is that He's putting us before himself. He's putting me before himself. So do you see how it doesn't become about control? So this just reminds me of, and thankfully to a much lesser extent, but it reminds me of like abusive relationships and abusive men who turn around to the woman and say, no one else will love you like I do. No one else will want you. And then they like hit her or abuse her or something. And then they're like, oh, I'm sorry, baby. It's just because I love you so much. I do it all for you. Here, have these like presence or something. See, look how nice I am to you. I'm just looking after you. I'm just loving you. Mwah. And then the woman's like, oh, I love you. I'll do anything for you. I'll never leave you. And that's sad. I mean, both, like, I mean, that situation is horrific, like really, really bad. And, you know, the kind of relationship that this woman is trying to like promote, it is definitely not the same as an abusive relationship. I'm just saying there are similarities to a much lesser extent. I mean, just to go back to a personal example, don't get me wrong, I love Dan, but if he started trying to tell me what to wear and where to go and what job to do and when to have kids and how to raise the kids and what my purpose in life is, I would be out of here so fast. He wouldn't even see me go. And I mean, I trust Danny with my life. I trust that he wants what's best for me. I trust that he'll always look out for me. But if he started to make stupid decisions, I mean, if he turned around and was like, Rachel, I love you, I care for you. Here, have all these presents. Now, we're gonna move into the middle of a war zone and you're gonna have seven kids and you're gonna give birth to them all without a doctor in the middle of nowhere. 
you can do that, right? Because you, you trust that I know what's best for you. If he did that, I would turn around and be like, bitch, no way. You are making a stupid choice. I am not going to do that just because I love you. And I'm not going to do that just because you love me. Just because he's usually, usually right doesn't mean he is this time. I think it's still important for both partners in a relationship to maintain some sort of independence. I think it's important for both people to think for themselves and be able to discuss things and compromise. I don't think one person should ever fully give up control to another person. I don't think one person should ever put their entire trust and faith in a partner all the time. You need to be prepared to say no sometimes, to have your own opinions, to do your own thing, to consider things together equally. As I said, relationships aren't about submission, they should be about compromise and equality and partnership. So ladies, I think it's really, really good for you to stop and think about the word submission and to take it out of the context of it's about control and that it's making you feel less than and really giving you a sense of empowerment to recognize you have to choose to yield to someone else and you have to choose to yield to the word of God and that that is an important role that you play as a wife in your marriage. Oh, I knew, I knew somewhere in the video she was going to talk about how submitting to your husbands is totally empowering and it's one of the like most anger inducing arguments to me. It just, it really annoys me. And then until the end of the video, she just repeats the same stuff over and over again. Anyway, so that's just what I think of this woman and her, I'm gonna say it, silly video. I don't agree with anything she said. I really, really dislike it. And I think it's promoting some really bad, unhealthy habits and ways to live your life. I don't like it at all. Um, but I'm going to end it here. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. What do you think about this idea of relationships being about submission or relationships being about compromise? Let me know your thoughts. Are they mutually exclusive? Anyway, do let me know your thoughts down in the comments, please. And if you like this video and want to see more like it, please subscribe because it really helps me out and it means that I will love you forever and ever and ever. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I know this has been a little bit of a long one. Again, I have a habit of doing this. I'm going to try and cut them down, I promise. Uh, but for now, I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon. Just wanted to say a quick, huge, huge thank you to everyone who is supporting me on Patreon this month with a special thank you to these guys. Ewan Matthewson, Secular Reason, Daniel Clark, Lockie Scott, Jaden Shepard, and Matthew Minamar. You guys are all incredible. Everyone else is linked in the description below or on the end screen. You're all amazing, and just thank you, thank you so much.